Hello and welcome to Credit Matters TV. Today we're speaking with Jessica Matsumori, one of the analytical managers in our not-for-profit education group at Standard & Poor's. We recently published our Higher Education Outlook for 2015. Jessica, S&P has a negative outlook for the second year in a row on the uh, sector as a whole, which means we expect more downgrades than upgrades in the space over the next year. Can you give us some of the reasons for that outlook? Thanks, Robin. We do have a negative outlook on the sector, as colleges and universities struggle to balance demands of their expenditures, while at the same time addressing student affordability and access. We believe this tug of war in an increasingly competitive market will continue to compress overall operating performance, and this pressure may tip schools, who are already close to a downgrade, over the edge in the upcoming year. Now, this competitive landscape is beneficial to students, but financially challenging for the universities and colleges. Now, although co college tuition continues to increase, but we will note at a slower rate than historically, the cost of educating these students also continues to rise. So institutions face an expensive contest to attract and retain the best students. And students are demanding more of their colleges in terms of facilities and services. And furthermore, other expenses are mounting from challenges such as risk management and compliance requirements, which have heightened in the most uh, recent years. So there's been a lot of talk lately of potential students finding college education just too expensive and maybe not worth the investment. Is this right. part of the reason that schools are struggling? Well, so it's true that with the cost of attendance and the amount of student debt increasing steadily, the debate over whether higher education is truly necessary uh, for individual success has intensified the past few years. Now, we believe the, the issue is much more nuanced than the headlines would suggest. So in our opinion, higher education is a term that's as broad as something like transportation. So the types of post-secondary education are akin to various modes of transportation. And just as a person may require some form of transportation to get from home to work every day, we believe that higher education is generally necessary for a person's long-term success and earning potential. However, and to continue this analogy, if gas prices rise or the um, cost of insurance or automobiles goes up, a person may uh, choose to forego his car in, in favor of some form of uh, public transportation. Uh, just so, should the cost-benefit ratio of one type of higher education mode become unattractive, a student may opt for a different type of college, degree, or career in order to meet their needs. So for example, a cost-conscious student may choose to forego a smaller, um, more expensive liberal arts college uh, for the more economical public university closer to home. So consequently, while we believe that demand for higher education overall is good and that the need for post-secondary education will increase over time, we do believe that the viability of individual institutions will depend on how they can demonstrate value and respond to their potential students' needs. Now this is especially important considering that for many colleges, competition has now expanded beyond their typical and immediate peer group to include other types of institutions and modes of education. It is our belief that colleges or universities that are unable to distinguish themselves based on reputation or offerings in the market will have to compete for students purely on price, which may weaken demand and possibly cut into their enrollment over time. So Jessica, you, and you, you alluded to it just now, but you re referenced right. it earlier. Those schools that are on the brink, what can they do to um, improve their financial profile? Sure. So we believe that institutions with astute and nimble leadership teams will be best positioned to successfully navigate through this changing landscape. Now we expect to see a growing number of leadership changes due to both the aging of the current senior leadership teams and strate strategic changes that may require different expertise and skills than an institution's current management possession possesses. Now we also believe that schools will actively be addressing a few key issues in 2015. And that includes increasing capital pressures and how to fund them, um, outsourcing needs including privatized housing and public-private partnerships, uh, managing shrinking health care margins and increased expenses related to the Affordable Care Act, and driving net tuition revenue growth through better use of financial aid dollars rather than increasing tuition itself. Now, all things considered, we believe that despite the likely stronger national economy this year, the not-for-profit higher education sector will likely see more negative rating actions than positive ones in 2015. 
as institutions strive to keep tuition affordable while adopting or improving amenities to draw and retain these students. Now the institution's ability to balance those factors in an increasingly competitive market will determine the direction of our ratings. Hey Jess, thank you very much for your insights today and thanks mm -hmm. to all of you for watching Credit Matters TV. To read more about this report, please go to our website.